this video about the Israeli army is going to be different. Different from the other videos I make on this channel and different from other videos that you see about the Israeli army. This video will not be about the Israeli army, the best army in the world, nor will it be about the poor Palestinians suffering under the cruel Israeli army. It will be a more personal video about my own experience in the Israeli army, not because my army service was particularly interesting, but rather the opposite. Serving in the Israeli army is a collective Israeli experience, and my experiences are similar to those of many Israelis. I could have made this video from anywhere, but because it is a travel vlog and because I'm a tour guide and because I served in the armored corps, I am making this video in Latrun. It is located along the road running between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. It is a complex that holds a tank museum, one of the biggest in the world, a memorial site for the battles that took place here, and in the future it will also include a museum dedicated to those Jews who fought in World War II. I think it is a really interesting topic, the Jews who fought in the Allied armies. It is a topic that no one talks about as people tend to associate the Jews and World War II with something else. Before we start, warning, this video contains embarrassing photos of me when I was a soldier 20 years ago. Now back to the main theme of this video. I will start with a name. In Hebrew we call the armed forces Tzahal, which stands for Tzva Hagana L'Israel, the Israel Defense Forces. In Hebrew we have the word army, Tzava, in the name. I mention this because if you speak to an Israeli, you might hear him or her say something like, I served in the army in the navy. When Israelis speak about the army, they mean the armed forces. The navy, the air force, um, the special units are all part of the army. In this video, when I say the army, I mean the armed forces. The Shabak and the Mossad, the Israeli um, CIA and FBI, or MI5 and MI6, are not part of the army and they report to the Prime Minister. As an Israeli, the first encounter you have with the army is when you are 17, then you get your Tzav Rishon, which means first draft. You have to go through different tests that determine which units you are qualified for. If you are smart and talented, you go to the Air Force, special units or intelligence. If your score is average, you will find yourself in the big army like infantry, artillery or tanks. I was in the tanks because I'm average. In a world in which everyone is special, I'm proud to be average. You are asked where you want to serve and the army does take it into consideration, but the two most important criteria are your abilities and what the army needs. When you enroll in the army, you first go through basic training where you taught to be a soldier and then advanced training where you learn your profession. In the tanks where I was, that means being a driver, loader or gunner and also working together as a team, as a platoon, which is three tanks and then as a company, which is 11 tanks. This was my tank, a Merkava Mark III. Here you can see what it looks like when it is clean and with no ammunition. Without the dust and the guns, it looks almost naked. These Merkavots are here Mark I, Mark II, Mark III and Mark IV, and not with the other tanks because this is the main Israeli battle tank. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the only tank that the Israeli army uses today. After training, you start doing what we call lines, four months next to Gaza, two months of training, four months on the border with Lebanon, two months of training and so on. That is what happens in theory at least. I can't tell you what really happens because the enemy is listening. That's a line from a cult Israeli film, Operation Grandmother, Mivza Safta. Men serve for 30 months and women for 24 months. Israel is the only country in the world in which women have to serve. Does everyone really do their time in the army? Not really. First of all, Israeli Arabs don't serve in the army, which makes sense as they have families on the other side. Although some do volunteer and 
ultra-Orthodox Jews don't serve either. This is a big topic in Israel and I will be talking about it in a different video. So please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so this way you will be notified when I upload a new video. In my environment, everyone I knew served in the army, my brothers, friends, everyone in my family, and I wouldn't be able to be friends with anyone who didn't serve. I think it is selfish not to. The Israeli public doesn't like people who haven't done their national service. In Wikipedia, for example, in the Hebrew version, they make note of where each person served. And if the person didn't serve, Wiki tells readers how they got around it by having a medical issue, psychological issue, or as Barifaeli, the Israeli top model, managed it by getting married to a friend of the family. If you are married, you don't need to serve. And then she got divorced. Of course, if you are sick or have psychological issues, then it is better if you don't enroll. When I enlisted, I was very highly motivated. I was sure that I would be a highly ranked officer. But the army is very good at bringing you down. I wasn't a good soldier. Now, I won't put all the blame on the army. 20 years on, I know that I have to take my share of the blame too. Working within a big organization or corporation is not a good fit for me. In my 20 years of working, I've been an employee for 10 months of that time. I don't like having a boss or being a boss. I like having colleagues and working with people, but as an independent person, these qualities are not appreciated in the army. And when I was 18, I wasn't aware of that. I'm talking about my own feelings first, because I guess that when people who haven't been in the army think about serving, they imagine battles or combat situations, but only around 10% of soldiers see combat. And I think that what most people take from the army does not necessarily have to do with war. I have been in conflict situation twice, and it is a moment full of adrenaline that you do think about a lot afterwards. But I think that what most soldiers take from it, the most vivid military experience, is the intense social experience. The army is a whole new world with different rules, different goals, and a different structure to any civil system you know. Imagine having to live with 10 random people, a bus driver, a doctor, someone who is unemployed, a soccer player, a high-tech worker, someone who has a falafel place, a very religious guy, and I don't know who else. And you live closer to them than you do to your wife. You sleep in the same room, you work together the whole day, you shower together, and in combat your life depends on them. Sounds fun? Maybe not. But you know, today everybody is talking about getting out of their comfort zone. And trust me, there is no better way to get out of your comfort zone than to join the army. But again, these are only my observation and I haven't seen much combat. Most of my friends saw much more combat than I did and maybe have a different perspective. If you are an Israeli watching this, feel free to write about your own um, experiences below. Serving in the army isn't much fun, but um, there is a reason why it is called serving. It is not about you and what you want and what you feel. It's about serving your country. When you look at the Syrians and the Iranians, for example, and you see what the regime there is doing to its own people, then it is scary to think what they would do to us. We need to be better than they are all the time and in all areas. We can't afford to lose. This is the very big difference between Israel and other countries. We are protecting our borders, our homes, our families. It is all very close by. We are not fighting on the other side of the world. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I find it very noble that Americans fought against European colonialism in World War I, against Nazism in World War II, and against communism in the Cold War. I mention it because the Americans can afford to lose in Vietnam, but we cannot afford to do that. You fight differently when you are protecting your actual home 50 kilometers, 30 miles from where you grew up. After the mandatory part is over, there are 20 more years of reserve army service. Israel is a small country with a small army. 
we cannot win a war with the active personnel only. It is only by calling on the reserve army that Israel can actually win a war. The reserve army is also very interesting. Every year you live your normal life and go off for two to three weeks of training. So every year you meet the same people. It is like a reunion that you have to attend with bad army food and a lot of coffee and eating candy. Only about 10% of people serve in the reserve army. The others find a way to get out of it. In the last 20 years, there have been more and more women joining the reserve army, usually up until they have their first child. In the Miluim, the reserve army in Hebrew, there is even less distance between the soldiers and the officers than in active service. People from other armies are shocked when they see how freely simple soldiers and high-ranking officers talk to one another. We don't have these hard and fast rules regarding discipline. Israelis aren't good at that sort of things. I was in the Miluim for about 10 years until our unit was disbanded a couple of years ago. This was probably a good thing as we use the Magach, which is the Patton M60. I will go and show you this tank. It is embarrassing. This is the tank the Americans used in the 60s in Vietnam. I rather fight from my Mazda. Just don't tell the Iranians that we use this tank right up until 2014. We used an improved version, of course. Now, a bit about the army and Israeli society. The army is considered the most trustworthy institution in Israel. The people give it much more credit than they do to the parliament or the justice system. Many of the former chief of staff have entered politics and some have been prime ministers. Unlike what you might think, it is often the generals who understand the limitation of using the army to solve problems. At the head of the army is the chief of general staff, who is an important figure in Israel for two reasons. First, the army is an important institution in Israel. And second, unlike the US where the president is the head of the armed forces, or in Germany where the chancellor is in charge of the armed forces when at war, in Israel it is the government as a whole that orders the army to act. So the face of the army is that of the chief of staff. But it is not only the chief of staff, you see it in low-ranking officers too. They learn to cope with a lot of responsibility at the age of 20 or 21. And it is very clear that those who were officers in the Israeli army get a lot further in life. I'm not an officer, so I'm well placed to say it. Check out some famous Israelis on Wikipedia. You know, not actors and singers, since, as you know, artists and the army don't go too well together, but people from other sectors and you will see that many of them used to be officers. What else? I probably haven't talked about many things relating to the army. If you have any question, then write them below and I will answer them. If you are an Israeli, you can of course add anything that I forgot. If you like my videos and want to support me, click the join button and join the community. Three weeks ago, I asked the community if there was anything they wanted to know about the army and I got some interesting questions. Are all army bases in the Negev? Many of the big army bases are in the Negev, the southern part of Israel, because it is less populated. When traveling in the Negev, there is a high chance that you will see army bases and soldiers. In recent years, many army bases in the center of Israel were moved to the desert because the cities got closer and closer to these bases and the land on which they stand came to be worth a lot of money. It is also in the national interest to bring more jobs and qualified people to the periphery of Israel. Another question was about doctors and professional soldiers like um, engineers. The way this works is the same as with most armies in the world, I imagine. The army pays for the university tuition, but then the soldiers will need to stay in the army for much longer. Salary is another thing people ask about. Combat soldiers earn around $450 a month and non-combat get $250 a month. If the soldiers decide to stay in the army once mandatory service is completed, then they get a normal salary. I was asked a question about the army base called Chabata Shomer. This is an army base in the north of Israel that belongs to the Education and Youth Corps. 
The Israeli army is unique in the sense that from the beginning, from 1949, it had educational tasks like teaching Hebrew to new olim, new Jewish immigrants, and sending soldiers to help settle places next to the borders. Today, they work with young people from poor backgrounds with social problems. Once in a while, the question is raised about whether this is needed. At the end of the day, the army duty is not to be an educational system, but to win the next war. My personal view is that if the army can help people who have dropped out of the educational system and give them a second chance and purpose and help them to be a part of society, then why not? For a fraction of the price of a new F-35, the lives of many can be changed for the better. Latrun is situated right in the middle of the road between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, next to Highway Number 1, so you will definitely pass it. Now that it is springtime and everything is so beautiful around here, I want to show you three places that are very close by. The first place gave this area its name. Let's get going. <laughs> So here you can see the ruins that gave the area its name. 900 years ago, the Crusaders built a castle here called Le Tourne des Chevaliers. It's French, I hope I pronounced that right. I probably didn't. And it means the Tower of the Knights. The name was corrupted by locals to become La Tourne. And to 14th century Christian pilgrims, the name La Tourne sounded like La Tournis, which means thief in Latin, and so it was said that a good thief who was crucified next to Jesus came from here. I like it. From the Tower of the Knights to the House of the Good Thief. Next to the ruins is a modern monastery that belongs to the Trappist, a Catholic order. In Hebrew, the name of the abbey is Minzar Shatkanim, the taciturn abbey. I grew up not far from here, and as a kid, every time we drove past the abbey, I would wonder how was it possible not to speak all day long? You cannot go inside the church itself, but there is a nice garden called the Brotherhood Garden. Here you can see this statue that is called Righteous men will live by faith, with three figures from three different religions from the 12th century. Rashi, the best known interpreter of the Bible. Bernard of Clairvaux, the founder of the Trappist order, which this abbey belongs to, who was against persecution of Jews by the Crusaders. And finally, Saladin, who was generous and let the Crusaders live after losing without harming them. I could have talked about the battles that took place here. This is a strategic area in the land of Israel, and I could have made three videos about battles that occurred here from biblical times to 1967, and maybe one day I will, but after talking so much about the army, I thought that a bit peace would do us good. And this brings me to the last place I want to show you, a nearby village called Neve Shalom, or Oasis of Peace. I will only add that the Abbey has a small shop selling souvenirs, olive oil, um, wine that they make here, so it can be a great relaxing stop if you're on your way from Jerusalem to the airport or to Tel Aviv.
It's a souvenir shop, so they don't sell anything to eat. You can always eat next to Latrun. There is a gas station as well as some restaurant next to the tank museum. But I would recommend a nice little local business. In Neve Shalom, there is a little place where you can get something to eat. I will be making a separate video dedicated to this village. So for now, I will just say that this village is one of a kind in Israel. Jews and Arabs are trying to live together here. Is it working out? Depends who you asked and when, but it is an interesting experiment. I want to show you something totally different. As I said, I grew up, I grew up in this area and we used to bring our dates to a really nice place here. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here it is. At night, at night there is a special atmosphere here. Not too bad at daytime either. History, archaeology, conflict and peace. When we were teenagers, all of that didn't matter so much. We had other things on our minds. So we started this video with my army service and went on to talk about peace. And we finished with the place we used to bring our dates to 20 years ago. I hope it makes sense to stuff it all into one video. Tell me what you think in the comments below. See you in the next video. Yalla bye.